Week two of fall football training camp for the Ball State Cardinals. It's a Camping World camp report. We're joined by first-year defensive coordinator David Elson. Uh, what is a first camp like for you? You obviously get a spring, but you're installing a new defense in a lot of respects. So how much work got done then? How much work is getting done now? And, and what is that plate like for you? Uh, you know, there's been a decent amount of carryover. So I think, uh, you know, the older guys have done a good job of retaining information. Uh, we try to teach the freshmen as much as we could in the summertime. Uh, but then there's some things that, you know, we kind of had on the shelf that we said, you know, we want to uh, install you know, as part of our system once we get into the meet of camp. And so we're doing that. And so they've had a lot thrown at them. And um, I think they've handled it well. Obviously, it's not perfect. and uh, But that's why you practice and keep coming back. Are you happy? Uh, no, I'm not. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do. Um, we've got a lot of potential. I mean, I, I'm excited uh, about what we can do, but um, it's a matter of uh, just embracing the process and these guys coming out and really uh, challenging each other, you know, uh, each and every day, uh, building that a bond that great defenses have, you know, as far as um, being accountable to each other, uh, talking football, learning football, uh, holding each other accountable in meetings and walkthroughs, and, um, and and we've had spurts of where you've seen some some uh, some great potential, and we just gotta you know get get uh, more consistency. People are curious about uh, I think first and foremost how the pieces will come together, just because fans like new, and anytime newcomers come in or freshmen come in, they want to know where they're going to factor in. Right. Uh, you look at a spot like the linebacker core though where you have a large crop of freshmen, it's the returners that haven't been exposed to a lot of football yet that have played a lot of your snaps with the ones and the twos. What have you been impressed with when it comes to guys like Jake White, Damon Singleton, Jalen Thomas, Jeremiah Jackson, who, who seem like they've had really good camps so far? Yeah, you know, I think the linebacker core, it, it, it's kind of, it is unique in that we have, you know, don't have returning starters per se, but we have guys with experience. And, you know, Jake is a captain of ours and uh, he is, him and Damon are doing a good job of understanding our defense. Uh, Jeremiah I've been really pressed with, and it's just really a matter of us uh, continuing to, you know, kind of move the pieces around, different combinations. And then there's some freshmen that have impressed us that, you know, we want to say, all right, where can he contribute? Uh, is it just a certain package? Is it base defense, nickel defense, those things? And um, But I think we're, we're building some good depth there. Brandon Martin's gotten a lot of run at Sam. He's a guy that a lot of people are probably not familiar with because he's played linebacker, he's played running back, and he's played hurt knee uh, a lot in his career and, and a lot of the latter. Uh, what's impressed you about him to basically kind of come off the shelf and change positions as much as he has and run with the ones? Yeah. He, Brandon is, you know, like the classic example of we've got to remember he's such a good kid and he is, he seems like he's older than he is, but he's a redshirt freshman. And he's like on practice nine or 10 because he had one or two in spring of playing linebacker at the college level. So um, he's learning, you know what I mean? He, he, uh, he, he wants it, he loves it, you know, he's really intense. I think sometimes he's a little too hard on himself, and so he needs to, you know, be able to develop that mentality of play the next play. But um, been really pleased with him, um, and, and like you said, doing uh, things that he simply has not done. And, and just because of the type of kid he is, it's kind of like you have high, you have high expectations, thinking well, he's been here, but he, he really hasn't. Cornerback position. We did a feature this week looking at. Mark Walton and Josh Miller returning and mm -hmm. kind of how everybody wants to look at new but don't overlook the guys that are back. They obviously had great off seasons. They have single digit uniform numbers. That's a testament to the work that they mm -hmm. put in. When you watch their film from last year and then you take into account what they did in the spring, uh, what has impressed you most about what they've done this fall in relation to, to their improvement? I, it's really simple. They've, they've just improved on simple technique, um, things that Coach Jackson is talking to him about. Um, certainly, we want it to be more consistent and we want it to be perfect. Um, but uh, they have, I have seen them embrace the technique and working at it daily and not getting bored with it. You know what I mean? You got, you got to really uh, focus on the basic fundamentals and and they've done a good job of that, and it shows up um, in them, you know, making plays and putting themselves in position to make plays. Confidence a factor too. It seems like Mark believes in himself more now than he ever has. Yeah, I think ex with experience comes confidence, and um, with just being around and, and being through, going through what they've been through with off seasons and earning the single digits and those things. Those guys are uh, confident guys, and if you're going to play that position, you better have some of that naturally. Otherwise, you're going to get you're going to get eaten up.
interesting dichotomy because both of those guys talked about their inexperience last year and how that factors in and how you have to have experience to play at a position like that where you're on an island. You're going to play a lot of freshmen, though, likely, in the defensive backfield mm -hmm. as well. We've seen a bunch of them. Uh, what has stood out to you to say, I mean, Bryce Cosby from the get-go was in there with the ones. Yeah. What makes you say, hey, we've got a guy like Bryce, we're confident enough that he's going to get this job done as a rookie? Uh, just the way they conduct themselves in meetings and walkthroughs. They answer questions. They're football smart. Um, been really impressive that way with Bryce. Um, Brett Anderson was the same way, you know, um, so just you know, by their actions. It, it, very simply, they, they've, um, you know, shown that they can be counted on uh, to an extent, you know. I mean, we've got to keep putting them in pressure pack situations, which, which we have been, and um, they've certainly made their share of mistakes, but also have made a lot of good plays and, and done some things where you're like, wow, tells you that they're, you know, very bright, very into it, and, um, you know, very competitive and, and want to do well. Is it rare, or I guess how rare is it when it comes to guys talking, knowing things early? The thing that struck me, day one, a guy like Bryce was out there making calls yeah. and was doing it confidently. Uh, that seems, and again, I've never taken part in a football practice in my life, but that seems out of place to me as a freshman coming out here and telling everybody else what to do. Yeah. Is that something that just hits you right away as a coach and says, he's got it? It's called recruiting. And these guys did a good job of recruiting the right guys, you know, and, and Bryce is one of those guys. And, you know, you see you see uh, pieces of that from other guys as well. Like I said, Brett uh, did some good things. But, yeah, Bryce is, is um, you know, just has a, a knack. You know, he has some instincts and, and some leadership ability and not afraid to, you know, make a call. And if he makes a mistake, he, he doesn't get down on himself. He, he plays the next play. And so, um, you know, been excited about what he's done. I want to touch quickly on the line with you as well. There's a bunch of guys uh, that we could touch on. I want to highlight two in particular. Uh, Anthony Winbush needs 11 and a half sacks to get mm -hmm. the school record, which I know he has set out for himself because it means he catches his position coach. Uh, does he have the ability that you've seen to put up a season like that? Because it would be pretty impressive. Uh, yes, Anthony Winbush has the ability to do some very special things. Um, you know, been really, really impressed with the way he's approached his camp. You know, he's he's um, just been very workmanlike and, um, you know, doing his job and, and really working at continuing to improve and trying to improve, listening to Coach McKenzie, but then also I see him grabbing other guys and, you know, Sean Hammonds is back, some guys that weren't with us in the spring, not necessarily just freshmen, but some of those guys that, you know, might be a little rusty and he's been, you know, working with them and coaching them up and, uh, you know, been really impressed with him and the sky's the limit for Anthony. Where can he still get better? Oh, gosh. Well, what do you want to see him work on most yeah, right now? You know, I, I think just um, consistency and some uh, some assignment things, you know, um, for all of us, you know, staying focused one play at a time would be, would be the biggest thing with, with Anthony. Uh, other guy I wanted to touch on with you is a guy who we knew a little bit last year. He was there, but he didn't make a huge impact in that you knew his name right off the bat. But it, it seems like he's been put into a big spot this year, and that's John Swisher. Uh, what have you seen in John that inspires the confidence to, to have him first and, and, and up front and in the middle of things? And it seems like he's run with that, that ins I guess, that, that inspiration from you guys. Um, John wins his one-on-one -on -one battles in his gap and makes plays. And that's it. He uh, does his job, and he does it well. He's very physical. He's very strong. Uh, you can tell he's confident. You know, and I don't, you know, I wasn't here last year, so I, I don't have any idea, but I know this. Um, our offensive coaches are like, it's hard to block him, you know, and so um, he's just simply, you know, one of those guys that has uh, embraced his new role. You know, I don't know what it is, but he's uh, no doubt, you know, him and Kevin Willis, I think, give us um, as good of a one-two punch inside and then you add in there you know Fred Schrader and and uh, Chris Crum and and we've got some some good depth and experience and talent uh, on the at the defensive tackle I know you said you're not happy yet but uh, if you watch the sideline you, you've definitely got some juice over there you having fun yeah we do always man it's a, it's a fun group to be around and you know we're gonna get on them and, and uh, but we're gonna have fun when we sell it we, we really make an emphasis that when things go well we want to enjoy it and celebrate it and we got to learn from it but um, great group of coaches and, and great group of players they're, they're locked in our meetings have been great um, but you know there's you're always looking for teaching uh, teachable moments and uh, really that you need some adversity to happen and and that happens when the offense makes plays and so we got to learn from it and uh, but yeah it's been a lot of fun. David as always appreciate the time uh, best of luck over the next couple weeks. All right thanks Joel. That's defensive coordinator David Elson joining us here on Ball State All Access at Camping World Camp Report on BallStateSports.com.